Hello everybody, I'm Buzz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 29th of July to August 3rd 2019 and this is where I talk about celestial transits that affect us all, all zodiac signs and give you hints regarding how to pass through these days in flying colors. So we've had a very creative fruitful week, some kind of a breath of fresh air after all that hectic energy in the sky over the past few weeks and in a sense this fruitful joyful energy is only intensifying throughout next week it is still a very sensitive time with long-term relationships especially with our marriages and partnerships and it's going to be so up to the middle of August as Mars and Juno are conjunct all across that time in the sky. But there's a grand fire trine that is also following us all along between Ceres and Chiron and the Sun and Venus that are conjuncting this week and walking hand in hand throughout these days in the sky. And only that fact, let's first end with that fire trine, that fire trine brings more energy, energy of creativity, of moving forward, of, 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 of creating my own future, of actually understanding that that creative personal effort, that spark is what is needed in order for my life, my life to transform, to grow, to endure throughout these challenges. This is my sword and my shield and my pen. I am the warrior poet, okay? And I need both to be inspired and to have a mission. That's that grand fire trine in the sky. And it calls us to work with our anxieties and fears and places we feel hurt and all the places we messed up in us and in this world, not to look away from these places of, of, of pain, but to actually address them and move forward after dressing that wound, after healing that wound with a lighter mass, with less weight off my shoulders, uh, less weight on my shoulders and actually a feeling of completion and forgiveness that can follow us and also be prevalent in our relationships throughout this time but only the fact that the Sun and Venus are walking hand in hand throughout this week in Leo because she moves into Leo Venus moves into Leo this Sunday the 28th in Leo is enough to provide a sense of joie de vivre of let's enjoy this life folks we live only once we need to wake up in the morning smiling we need to Breathe in and understand that this breath has not been in vain, that we have actually took, that we took the zest of life and made an orgy with it. This is the kind of energy that we're looking for. We want that nectar in our life. We need it. We crave it. We long for it. And indeed, we can make it manifest in our lives this week. So do not despair and do give some time for enjoyment for the creation of satisfaction in your life this is a good week as well to tend to your practical and and um, materialistic needs monetary needs dressing them and actually tending to them cultivating them gardening them as a part of your own sustainability and satisfaction in this world. True spirituality is not disconnected from practical reality and from uh, 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 actually understanding that we need two feet at the same length to walk forward in this life. I remember my father telling me, that we could look at Eastern cultures traditionally and say they have a very long left foot, a spiritual foot, but their right foot at, uh, in the past before globalism uh, and, and globalization, you know, and the insemination of, of different cultures, 
they had a shorter right foot, a, a practical, um, um, materialistic foot, and so they were very rich in spirit and very poor in matter. They were limping. And if we look at traditionally what was Western culture, we can see that capitalism and materialism and, and economy became new gods, and that right foot is extremely long, but there was a lack, at least until the 80s, the 90s, when people started opening up to the East and to Eastern philosophies and traditions, that there was a shortage in that left foot. And people were not content, were not happy, were not being fulfilled, even though the monetary and, uh, and physical needs were being fulfilled. We were still limping. So we need these two feet at the same length in order to walk forward in life and, and create that true satisfaction. And this week is a lot about the acknowledgement of that. And as I said, on the 28th, Moon in Gemini, uh, we're having Venus striding into Leo, heightening that sense of creativity, that need for manifestation and for joy and love. I'm sorry, in our lives. Be careful from exaggeration because the Moon is going to oppose Jupiter on that day, so we could be a little untactful and not know when we should draw the borders and actually bring um, excess into our life that isn't healthy. Um, the night between the 28th and the 29th, we're having a nice meteor shower in the sky. It's called the Aquarades. It comes from the uh, Aquarian cluster and there's about 20 stars per hour shooting down. And since the sky is going to be relatively dark because we're heading into a new moon in Leo, it's a good time to go out and see the sky after midnight as long as you're far away from any light pollution. The 29th itself is a sensitive day. The moon is going to square Chiron and the sun is going to trine Chiron. That means it's also a day that is fantastic for healing. That's another reason I was saying at the beginning of this video that we need to work with our pains and aches throughout this week. We need to tend to them and not look away from them. Um, and to add to that uh, salad, the moon is going to be in the very melodramatic sign of cancer. So on the 29th and the 30th, we have to understand that we're more sensitive and that we could be a little more intolerant because of it with other people around us. Hello, Georgia. Did you want to add to this video? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, I I'll, I'll tell people. Georgia says that on the 31st, yes, yes, the, mm -hmm, and the 30th, that they're sensitive days as well because the moon is going to oppose uh, uh, Saturn and then Pluto. So we have to watch our judgment and we have to watch how strict we are with ourselves and others and just don't be too gloomy and, and too harsh with yourself. Uh, the 31st is a little brighter because the moon is already in Leo. And then the 1st of August, as the moon is still in Leo, it's a Thursday. It's quite an energetic day. It's a new moon in Leo. And remember, the days leading towards a new moon are a day of imprinting. So whatever passes within your system throughout that time actually stays with you throughout the new lunar cycle of 29 and a half. So, this is a new moon, conjunct Venus, trining Chiron. What a wonderful time to acknowledge how much beauty and harmony and satisfaction we do have in our lives and the wonderful relationships that we do have in our lives, the love that we have for ourselves and other people in our lives and utilize these strengths to provide a healing, a completion, a forgiveness, a sense of walking forward with lesser weight on our shoulders and actually tending to the things we need to tend to, to the places we've messed up, to the uh, uh, recalibration we need to take in order to make this world a better place and feeling better about ourselves because of it. Venus is going to try and Chiron on that 
day as well. That means that all our relationships are subject to some kind of healing right now, that our satisfaction itself is subject to a healing right now. And you can see how this new moon affects you by looking at your chart and looking at those degrees, the 8th, the 9th, and the 7th degrees of Leo, and see if anything squares it, opposes it, or conjuncts it. We have to understand that our relationships need to change, need to transmute, need to be upgraded at this time, because Friday the 2nd, we're having a square from Venus to Uranus. That means that all the days leading to it as well could be days that we are faced with limitations or with requests or are asking our partners and people in our relationships to move forward in some way and they are reluctant. There could be some kind of challenge here and we need to be more tolerant, understanding that not everybody moves at the same pace, recognizing the value we all bring to each other but providing each other with more autonomy, independence and an ability to walk forward on their own without breaking the rules and the whole system down. Saturday the 3rd is a good day for business. It's a good day to take strategic, strategic things forward. It's a good day to, you know, take care of business somehow, even personally at, ha at, a ho at home. And it's also good for anything that has something to do with the uh, spirit and, 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 and body connection, like the, the mindfulness mind-body connection or anything that has to do with health, any activity that has to do with health, but it doesn't have such a relaxed energy to it. That's about everything I had to say and I want to remind you that if you want to study with me from wherever you are around the world, there's a new advanced and beginner webinar course opening up, so contact me. You have all the information at the end of this video. Thank you for listening and sharing these videos. They expose them to more people. May we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.